Hjärtligt välkomna till Världskulturmuseet, Globala torget. I år pratar vi väldigt mycket demokrati och inte bara demokrati förstås utifrån att gå och rösta utan demokrati utifrån yttrandefrihet, att bli bedömd av hatspråk och andra som inte är, som får tillgång till demokratin. En oerhört stor grupp som inte har rösträtt och har på, och möjlighet att påverka sin situation i förstås alla barn och unga i världen. Och tuffast för dem är de som bor i de allra mest utsatta områdena. Eh, nu ska vi prata om hur Israels blockad mot Gazaremsan har påverkat barnen och ungdomarna som bor i dessa områden. Hjärtligt välkomna Ship to Gaza. Tack så mycket. Men jag fick höra att det skulle tas på engelska. Så att det är det jag har förberett. And uh, as I said, I was prepared for this to be in, in English for our my colleague and our guest online, the uh, Omar, and then uh, Ellen will also speak after I just give the words about the background to the problem we have in Gaza with the siege and the blockade that must end. In Gaza, two million people live trapped and under occupation and blockade without any clean water, without electricity. 50% of the population is under the age of 18, considering children. Unemployment is sky high and about 80% live below poverty line. The Israeli wars and weekly attacks of aggression against Gaza has had devastating consequences for people, with many killed, many injured. More than 100,000 houses have been bombed, and this has made people become homeless due to the wars and attacks for the last 15 years. And why? This because. More than a hundred years ago, the British declared that they were going to give Palestine to the Jewish people to build a homeland. And since that time, no Palestinian in Gaza or the West Bank have been able to live a day in peace. And more so, after the two intifadas, the Israeli settlers decided, decided to leave their illegal, illegal internationally illegal settlements in Gaza. This was in 2005. And after that day, all borders to Egypt and the roads to the West Bank have been closed and only opened when the Israeli army so decide. Above that, the COVID pandemic have doubled the suffering for children and people of Gaza. No medicines, no vaccines, and no ordinary food is allowed to enter without the permission of the Israeli army. This has made the families with children and all civilians of Gaza a life unbearable for any of us here in this room. So, I repeat, the siege and the blockade of Gaza must end, must end now. And I will leave the word to my colleague Omar from Gaza, telling us more about the effect on children this siege has had. The word is yours, Mr. Omar. Uh, Mr. Omar, you are uh, online now, and uh, we are hoping for you to tell us more about the situation and the effects this siege has had on the children of Gaza. Do you hear us? Okay, uh, and if... Uh, we can't get reach of, of Omar. Omar, maybe um, Imad is online and can take the word, maybe. Yes, hello, I am online, yes. 
And uh, Mr. Ahmad, you are with us. Yes, I am with you. Do you hear me? Yes, and uh, the mic is yours, and you can tell us. You haven't heard the beginning. We, we, we would like for you to, to tell us, uh, from your perspective, the effect the siege and the blockade of Gaza has had on the children uh, and youth in Gaza, and why this has to end now. Yes. I, uh, do you see me also? Yes. I can see Omar Shaheen here. Is is coming in? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Yes. Hello, good evening, everybody. My name is Ahmad al Ruzi, and uh, I am born and raised in Gaza Strip. Um, I have been working in developing um, intervention uh, programs to children who have been traumatized. I've studied um, occupational therapy and uh, master in special needs education. Uh, when it comes to uh, the tra traumatic experience, I would uh, I would start really with the day uh, that uh, Muhammad al durra was uh, murdered uh, while he was together with his father. In that day, I can remember very well, um, and the accident happened very close to my house, uh, that um, we have started to see a lot of children who have lost the, the faith of their parents, especially the father, who is in the cultural, in the Palestinian cultural context, is a, a symbol for, of protection. And when uh, the father of Muhammad al uh, was not able to protect his son, actually the son died that day, and his, and, and his, his son actually is, is the one who died, and the father survived, then that means for many children that they actually have lost that ability and that security uh, that they need. And that's why a lot of children, uh, the coming days or uh, the, the after a few days, have gone also out in the streets, have been throwing stones uh, and, and so on. I'm not sure if I am able to share with you a file here or not. I'll try just to... Yes, we would like to, 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 to hear more about your, your perspective of this as, in your, as your professional in the, in the uh, subject, but we don't have that much of time, Mr. Mr. Ahmad, oh, so okay. uh, if you just say... Uh, it will, uh, will be very short then. Yes. Okay, well, from our work and, and observation, we will see that the, most of the children have been very much returned, and, and they have really lost uh, the... The, the interest of, of life, actually. Um, many children, actually, usually, would, would, would you ask them, I would like to be a doctor and so on, and, but, but actually in that, in that domain, have, many children have been really uh, not able to, uh, to, 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 to think about, actually, tomorrow in a brighter way. There has been lots of attention and concentration span um, uh, challenges which actually um, made uh, schooling um, very, very much difficult for them. There has been also a lot of school refusal, where children actually has been um, refusing to go to school because of um, the fear of, of that the schools has been targeted in several times. There has been a lot of uh, academic also the achievement among uh, these children. And the, and the feeling of insecurity and obsessive thoughts has been very dominant uh, in their everyday life. There has been also a lot of irrational fear of the future, uh, which is, uh, cannot be uh, sometimes justified or actually uh, discussed with the children. In the social aspect, there has been a lot of social withdrawal of children, so the children would not really be able to, to maintain or to start a kind of conversation with the others or their their peers of their peers children. And and in, in addition to that, there has been a lot of aggression and nervousness among among these children. And and you could see it very clearly when you go to a schoolyard and um, you see the, the, the children like um, in, in, in this 
they have like a breaks. This you, you can see them playing, but actually they have been using a lot of their body and body energy uh, in a quite aggressive way towards each other. And the aggressiveness has been also expanded to materialistic things, uh, including uh, home things like windows or, or, or other things. Uh, you could feel that there is a lot of negative energy that has been really um, making the, the children's uh, everyday life as complicated as possible. One of the most also embarrassing uh, uh, things that we have been observing is the uh, with children actually would um, uh, bed with their themselves, and that also make them a kind of um, uh, subject also to bullying or uh, to uh, to other kind of uh, comments from their uh, uh, sisters or brothers. But actually, it is hurts most uh, when it comes to their uh, self-esteem and self-confident um, um, when when they bid, when they uh, bid with uh, themselves. Um, there has been also lots of uh, sleeping disturbances among these children. We could see that um, it comes in different forms. Uh, some children have been um, uh, quite uh, d d having difficulty to sleep early or if they sleep, so they wake up in the middle of the night. But also there has been also another form of uh, sleeping dis disturbances, which is kind of related, we call it the grilling uh, modus, where the child like uh, spend the whole night between right and left and right and left and right and left where they, they, they really sleeping, but actually they are not sleeping when it comes to their uh, mind. How much time I do have? Thank, thank you, Mr. Ahmad. Uh, uh, and for this, this fact about uh, this horrible facts that you, you are telling us, uh, what do you think there is any, do you see there's any hope for this generation that uh, most of them now have, have, uh, have lived through? these uh, four uh, uh, big wars and all the attacks in between is there any hope for them uh, to to be to that that is shown or can be seen in the future or what what's your perspective on that my perspective there will be hope only if there will be a kind of um, continuous uh, peaceful uh, environment around these children I mean, with this continuation of the wars around them, uh, and these are actually not wars, it is a kind of attacks uh, where uh, the children also experience a lot of uh, injustice, where their peers been killed, where families were, were killed. So, I mean, their beliefs of, of, uh, of the future become very, very weak and become very black. Uh, and, and I'm really worried about the coming generation who have really experienced these four years of uh, four, four war actually in Gaza. However, without a kind of sustainable uh, peace, without the establishment of a Palestinian state or the stop of the Israeli attacks uh, on, on civilians and on Palestinian people, then I would not say that uh, I am very optimistic about the future. No. Well, I'm sorry to hear that also. And that's why we as a community and uh, we who, who think that we might be able to, to change something in this future uh, are planning and now ship to gaza is also planning uh, to another project in uh, 2022 and my colleague here ellen will tell us more about this uh, please yes so um it's uh, very important to hear uh, both of you speak about this and so i'm going to explain what we do to try and change it uh, so Ship to Gaza Sweden is a part of uh, the international network uh, Freedom Flotilla Coalition, uh, which is a grassroots solidarity movement um, composed of campaigns and initiatives uh, all over the world, really, from South Africa to Spain, US, um, even uh, New Zealand and Malaysia. So there's a lot of solidarity all over the world. Um, and as we can see, the authorities and the governments aren't doing enough. So that's why we feel as a civil society that um, grassroots initiatives is needed to um, raise awareness and raise the issue and um, Yes, to shed light on the situation. And uh, we believe that um, one of the, the key actions 
to end the blockade is, is by um, a direct action um, through the, the sea to end the marine uh, blockade. And this will show that, um, that the blockade is really illegal and that Israel is, um, in fact, uh, cutting off the water and the, the sea for the Palestinians. So um, the flotilla was formed in 2010 and there has been 35 boats sailing so far. Um, we hope <laughs> each time it will be the last, but we always keep on um, striving to succeed. So we keep on sailing and now we have a boat um, which we were hoping to sail actually two years ago, but the pandemic uh, happened. So now we are, um, and we as a grassroots movement, we don't get any sort of funding um, or large donations. We, we base all our work on grassroots efforts. Um, so all the campaigns all over the world uh, raise money and uh, fund these boats and equip them with uh, medical equipment and uh, materials that is needed in Gaza. Um, and also the boats are um, a symbolic gift that we hope to, to hand over to, to the population in Gaza. Um, so fishermen can use them for their livelihood. Um, but Yes, what we really want to say is that um, we feel that, you know, authorities and governments like Sweden, who is a very wealthy, um, used to be very solidaric uh, in the past um, and supportive of the Palestinian people, we, we feel that there's a lot of talk and not enough action. Um, and... Uh, Sweden is providing some humanitarian assistance, but what is really needed is a long-term actual change for the Palestinian people. The UN has, has uh, acclaimed Gaza inhabitable actually last year. Um, so the, the suffering is, is reaching a very uh, severe level. Um, so yeah, we, we hope that you know, we can put some pressure on our authorities. And uh, yeah, so now we are, we are um, working, um, as I said, all over the world to try and, and uh, make this flotilla happen and, and hopefully, you know, reach Gaza. Yes. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Uh, uh, back to, to the last question for you, Mr. Ahmad, uh, seeing this, uh, from abroad, we living outside of Palestine, outside of Gaza, uh, see the international community to, to be the only force that might help this situation to be resolved. And what do you think, or what do you think that the EU and the United Nations should do to resolve this situation? Mr. Ahmad. It's, the answer is very simple. Is it is about sanction. Um, I mean, uh, we we have we the history repeat itself. I mean, uh, when we when we see South Africa, the apartheid system was not ended by condemning uh, the, the apartheid, but actually it was ended and changed after putting pressure uh, on there and sanction against uh, this. I mean, we have experienced like. Uh, the, 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 the latest war, like for example in, in Afghanistan and in, in, in Iraq, it was done against just to uh, for for nuclear weapons, which was not existing actually. I'm not demanding the war to 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 attack Israel, of course not, or have a war with Israel, but actually to to stand firmly uh, with their uh, with their respect also to the international and. Uh, uh, human rights that they have themselves actually they have signed and put Israel in a way in a pressure where they have to admit the, the right of Palestinians for self-determination. I mean, there is a lot of boycott uh, actions that can be taken on a different uh, 
different levels, uh, from the academic to the trained, even to the diplomatic uh, pressure. Israel must understand that what they are doing uh, is not accepted, and therefore they, they, then they can stop. And, but as far as they are doing and killing people, and the international community is just sometimes condemning it verbally, uh, then, then I don't see any kind of way out of it. So that, therefore, I would encourage a lot of uh, lobbying in different parts of the country, in the different uh, parts of the world, in order to press governments to take. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Ahmad. We are, we. Uh, I also agree that the the United mm -hmm. Nations should be the ones. Uh, imposing sanctions. You have hundreds of resolutions against Israel from the international community for their illegal settlements, illegal walls, and the illegal siege on Gaza. And we all hope for the, uh, the United Nations to one day uh, use these resolutions and make sanctions against, so we can see uh, some facts on ground to stop the siege and the blockade of Gaza. Do you have a, a, a final word to say, Ellen, before we end this? Uh, yes, I just want to say thank you for sharing your, your knowledge about the situation and hopefully this can reach a lot of people and um, yes, uh, get engaged in this issue which is really important for the future of the Palestinian people and uh, yeah, support the next flotilla. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.